What's poppin'? It's Mello back at you with another video, and today we're getting into a topic that I've been waiting to get on since I began this channel. Like, since the moment I began this channel, I knew this moment would come. The basics on how to make R&B. Yes, we're gonna go over that in my perspective on how to make R&B from a basic standpoint. This is gonna be mainly for beginners. This video is brought to you by the Pandora VST. I'm gonna be using a Pandora VST for all of the melodic sounds in this. It has all types of stuff. It has bells, guitars, keys, as far as pianos and different types of keys, since has all types of stuff. We're gonna be showcasing that and showing you how good it works. And also, I'm gonna be going over different concepts as far as R&B from sound selection, which this plugin is good for, but also chords, melodies, and drums. Those are gonna be the main things that we cover as far as the basics of R&B. So before we get into it, I need you to put a like on the video, help your boy out, help get the vid up, and let's get into it. So the first category that we'll be discussing is sound selection. The question I personally ask when I do sound selection for R&B beats, as far as the first sound that I pick, what am I going to have playing my chords? R&B is a very chord driven genre. So the instrument that you pick to play the chords is gonna be the most foundational and important instrument more than likely in the beat. When I look at contemporary R&B, this is basically how I break down the four categories of instruments. The first type of instrument that you could choose would be key based. When it comes to this category, any instrument that pretty much hits and decays shortly after it hits would be considered a key bass instrument. So pianos, of course, electric pianos, bells, and other instruments of that nature would fit into the keys category, including synths that have that quality. The second type of sound you can use is plug bass. What falls into this category is pluck synths, guitars of all types, electric and acoustic, instruments like harps and other ethnic instruments, anything that's similar to a piano where there's a decay, but there's a plucking sound at the beginning. The third category would be string bass. Now with this, the difference between the last two is these take up a lot of space and they can fill up a beat. So any type of strings through orchestras, like violins, violas, all types of pads also work. And if you also have poly synths that hold and sustain the note at the same velocity or around the same velocity, those will fall in this category as well. After you have your first instrument, you then wonder what should be the second instrument you play to make a top melody. Well, if you didn't do everything with the first instrument, you can pick a lot of different types of instruments. One of the most famous types of instruments, especially in 90s R&B, is a synth lead. If you notice, I use a sustaining instrument as far as the lead with a decaying instrument, which was the piano. In my opinion, you should contrast things like that, instruments that have a long decay or short decay with instruments that sustain. That's why guitar and flute beats work so well. Now, if you feel like that's taking up too much room, you can also use another decaying instrument like a bell. Synth bass is very popular right now as well, so that's definitely an instrument you can use as the low end instrument, or you can use the 808, it depends on what you're doing, but this is my advice for sound selection as far as most contemporary R&B. You want to have an idea 
at what sound you're aiming for and what instruments it takes to make that sound. For example, Summer Walker, Bryson Tiller, and Doja Cat don't make music over similar beats. Now, there are a lot of artists who use beats in a Bryson Tiller lane, in a Summer Walker lane, and in the Doja Cat lane, but as far as those three artists, they don't have the same sound. And it takes different sounds or different textures to achieve those types of sounds. So you wanna study the types of sounds that they use in the beats and how they use them. And even if you're just freestyling, making R&B beats yourself, you wanna take a look and note what sounds made that beat pop the way it did. The second thing we're gonna go over is chord progressions. Now the thing about R&B in comparison to the other genre you see me do most, which is trap and rap and stuff like that, R&B can get more complex with the chords. And in my opinion, the genre is very chord driven. I'm just gonna give you some foundational information that's gonna help you get started making R&B or that's gonna take you know the R&B beats you have to the next level if you're new to this. I have videos on scales and two videos on chords and chord progressions. You should watch those, it'll give you a good foundation for all the music that you make as far as music theory. Let's get started. We're in a C minor scale and we're going to do a one, four, five chord progression. So we start at C, that's the root, that's one. Then let's count up four. One, two, three, four. That would be a four, that would be a five. So we're gonna build basic triad chords on top of that three note chords. So boom, we're gonna put one in between. You know, we're gonna skip every other note. So skip this note, boom, skip this note, boom. Skip this note, skip that note, boom. I'm going to highlight this, transpose it down. Very basic, not very R&B-ish. So the tip I'm gonna give you right now if you want to make a chord progression more jazzy, more R&B, more heartfelt, whatever word you want to use for it, instead of using basic triads, use seventh and ninth chords. Let's just go over it real basic. So if you have a three note chord progression, skip a note in the scale, add another note. That will make it a seventh chord. Let's listen to that. You already hear the difference between that and this. To make it a ninth chord, you skip another note and add a note right there. Let's listen to it. Very R&B-ish, very lush, good chords, thick. So it sounds very R&B-ish, it sounds very good, but when it comes to R&B chord progressions, in most cases, they drag out a lot longer. Right now, I'm only taking up two measures whether you're doing a double time or whatever, I'm doing a double time. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take these notes, I'm gonna hold the alt button and stretch these out. Now let's listen to it while it's dragged out a lot longer. very R&B-ish. Now with that, you can do all types of things like add arpeggios or have it slow strum and stuff like that. You can do all types of stuff with the chord progression. But the most important thing is that the chord progression sounds lush. This is where the feel comes from, these types of chords. And another thing, you don't need like a five chord chord progression. You don't need four chords. Two to three will get the job done. So now I'm gonna give you just a little bit of game. Most of these are major chord progressions. I think all of them are, but I'm gonna give you a few chord progressions you could just look at, and I'll show you the name with each so you know exactly what it is. The two five one that you've seen, that's in major. They have a major and minor version. Those are the most popular chord progressions in r and I'm gonna have videos on those in the future. So the third part that we're gonna go over is the melodies. When it comes to the melody for a lot of this music, especially with vocalists on it, 
the melody is going to be a passive melody it's not going to be doing too much it's usually going to be in alignment with the chords the truth is it's just a foundation and a canvas for the actual singer to make the actual melody on the singer is going to make the melody think about a song like confessions and think about the melody on that and then just think about the song when it comes to your head you think this is my confession it, it, because the note is a static note is do 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 i know i sound funny i know this is probably a me a memeable moment but if you think about stuff like that you'll think whoa the melody isn't all over the place it's not magical or nothing like that it's just a basic foundation for usher to come and lay down a melodic vocal. Now I'm sure there are more melodic songs and things like that. You could even look at Chris Brown go crazy. Like that's got a melody that's all over the place cause it's doing like the New Orleans bounce and stuff like that. But peep it, when the verses come in and the sample pulls back, all you hear is guitar chords, that's it. So we're not gonna go too deep on that. Let's get into the actual lesson. Let's get into the actual tutorial. So I got two melodies going. I got a counter melody and a main melody. We're gonna look at the guitar one first. It's not the most active melody. It's not doing a bunch of crazy stuff. It's real simple. And if you look at it, for each one of these bars, it's only doing three notes, and in the last one, it does two notes. So that's what it is. It's very minimalistic. It's not all over the place. It could even be more passive than that. Let's go to the other melody. Now, if you see this one, this is above all the ghost notes. So this is really, really high. If you look at the volume, it's turned the lowest. It plays the background a little bit. Now you would think that's a counter melody and it kind of is, but the real purpose of this melody is to support the harmony in a higher octave. That's all it's really doing. Let's get to another melody. So with this, we have a passive melody that's basically a pluck with a lot of reverb over everything. And the preset is pluck agent. So let's listen to it real quick. So with that, you see it's very minimalistic with the notes, but it's still moving in some places where the chords aren't doing any different movement. And we can even take a look at the bass line. It's doing a little bit as far as doing some melodic stuff. If you listen to the two compositions that I just played, imagine a singer overdose. It's gonna go so well. They can create their own melodies. It gives them a lot of space to make a memorable melody as a vocalist. Now the last thing we're gonna go over is drum styles. So the thing about R&B, there are a lot of different drum styles and I'm gonna have a video or a series of videos on drum styles in the future, but if you listen to somebody like Summer Walker's album, it uses every type of drum style that I'm gonna mention. The first type you can do is live drums. We're gonna listen to that. Other type of style would be trap drums. And the other type of style would be a very minimalistic percussion Drake type style. So of course you would have to learn those drum styles. That's too much to get into in this video, but I'll give you some basic information. If you're gonna go with the live drum set, make sure you have good live drum sounds, make a live drum pattern and dirty it up with something like RC20, resample it, cut the sample rate, do some things like that. Trap drums, I have a whole tutorial on trap drum patterns. It's the first tutorial I did, one of the tutorials I get the highest praise for, so go and check that out. For the minimalistic type of sound, you'll wanna use, you know, 808s, 808 toms, or other percussion, and use a lot of reverb, and just have it real spacey. You might even wanna use a clap here or there, 
but for different drum styles, you wanna know what type of sounds to select and what type of patterns to use. That's really what it is. Nobody's reinventing the wheel. Nobody's coming out and making some crazy stuff that nobody's ever done before. That's, that's not what's happening. You should really study the drum styles and learn what works with what as far as making cohesive drum styles. So you heard what the VST can do as far as Pandora. Even though this is an R&B tutorial, Pandora is also good for trap, drill, and lo-fi beats. If you're interested in getting it, click the link in the description. Use my coupon code M-E-L-L-O-2-0 at checkout to get 20% off. And with R&B, these are the basics. These are the building blocks, the foundation that is in most of the R&B that you hear. And if it's a genre that you're not too familiar with, this is definitely gonna give you a good foundation. Now, when you look at the genre of R&B, there are a bunch of different types of sounds. You have the Bryson Tiller OVO type sound. Then you have some of the Summer Walker type stuff, and Kalani has a different sound. Like, there are all different types of sounds, even if you look at, like, the 90s R&B and stuff like that. When it comes to the chords and things like that, R&B, out of the genres that I touch, is the most complex with the chords. There are more chord devices like passing chords and other ways to do chords as far as voicings that I'm gonna get to in the future because that's way too much to cover in this video. This video will be like 40 minutes if I got into all that. So be on the lookout for those videos in the near future. I'm not, it's not gonna be eight months down the line. It's gonna be in the near future. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. Be sure to subscribe, click the bell to get notified and leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the VST and the whole tutorial or if you have any questions anything you're curious about i'll be happy to answer but other than that i'll see y'all another day somehow some way i'm out